here we are with Matt Mason. Welcome. Um, we just deprived him of cold brew, um, but you know we've also heard a little bit about uh, the chicken tenders he's had recently. So it's been a give and take. It's been a good and bad. Um, what do you have to say about the chicken tenders? I just looked down and noticed that there is a stain um, from said chicken tenders. A little buffalo last sauce. Night. I had chicken tenders for two meals yesterday. Okay. Um, no regrets. <laughs> so what we know for sure about you is that you wore those pants yesterday. Yeah. I had chicken tenders twice. Um, yeah. All good stuff. So speaking of really good chicken tenders, I know you're from Virginia, where I'm also from. A land of delicious fried chicken. Yes. Yeah. What part of Virginia? I'm from Norfolk, um, okay. but I lived in Virginia Beach for a while, Gloucester for a while, and Richmond. Um, is that where you live now? Do you still live in Virginia? Uh, as soon as I signed with Atlantic Records, I moved to LA for two years. Oh, wow. And then I moved to Austin, Texas about five months ago. No New York? No, no. Why? I couldn't do it. I couldn't you don't do like it. New York? I do like New York, but it's just too much, too stressful. Mm. Like. I'm like stressed half of the year because I'm on tour and doing things. Fair. I don't want to come back to like. To, to, yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, and like subway and like rats and like yeah. I get that. I do, but I also think you know, there's like an artistic thing to me. Right? I do love coming here. Yeah. yeah. There was actually one night that I uh, went out and I drank a bunch and I walked from Manhattan to Williamsburg, but I walked across the Williamsburg Bridge at like 3 a.m. Solid. And there was nobody up there. Yeah. I can't remember what song I put on, but I put on a song and I literally just danced. <laughs> and I will never forget that. It was just yeah. so much fun. Like, and that's the thing about New York. I feel like there's like moments for that. Mm -hmm. you know? But so you don't like busyness. You don't like the the chaos of New York. So being yeah, is being on crowds. tour is that you hate crowds? I hate crowds. Like being in the crowd. Right. Like You're performing I'm, like, for them. Yeah. If I'm seeing my favorite band, I'm not the guy in the pit. Like, okay. Shoulder to shoulder. I'm like. In the balcony, in the back, just kind like, of vibing, reserved, yeah, yeah, I'm reading a book. So, or is like tour life like? Do you love it? Or are you one of those musicians who's like, I always want to be on tour? Or is it like kind of a lot for you? This tour, like, it just depends on how crazy the tour is, how mm -hmm. stressful it is. Because obviously, once it gets like crazy, you're like, I would love to be in my bed. Or <laughs> would love to be napping. Yeah, but um, this last tour we did was just an acoustic tour, mm. so it was so like low stress. I mean, obviously, it's exhausting because you're on the road for a month, but. Yeah so smooth and easy and like once you get to the point like we were in like a van but once you get to that point where you have like a bus or mm. something i feel like it's so much easier too yeah you have like bunk beds and shit i'll get home and like chill for two weeks and be like all right i'm ready to get back on the okay bed. all right so you're still you're into it even if it's not like your lifeblood yeah do you prefer the acoustic versions because i know that the cringe actually the acoustic version is maybe doing better, isn't it? Even though it came out second. Yeah, it is. The stripped version is doing better on That's like wild. Spotify and, and YouTube. It's so it's good. super it's weird. Incredible. It's also weird that it's just that song's taking off when it's we put that song out two years ago. Right. And did it just start taking off? Yeah. I mean we just started pushing it to radio and then doing a ton of like press for it and all that and then obviously touring it. Right. Do you prefer playing acoustically? I don't think I like more one more than the other, honestly. Um, if I'm playing for like really big crowds, it depends on the venue too. Sure, yeah. Like this tour we did like theaters, mm. and that's obviously like sick for that's cool. acoustic. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if we're doing like clubs and things like that, full band. It's like, right, yeah. so it's more of a vibe, I get that. But then you started playing acoustic music, right? Like in prisons, I mm -hmm. read, and like in a motorcycle uh, bar, uh, yeah. what was well, that? My parents have a ministry where they go to like prisons and biker rallies and mm. things like that basically everywhere they think the church won't go mm. is where they want to go um and so i did like sturgis motorcycle rally and like daytona bike week um and then just like dozens of prisons over the course of like three years that's incredible it was really fun those are still some of the best shows really I've ever played. Yeah. why like what about them you just see the effect that music has because when you go into a prison which is like an incredibly dark place sure. Um, with a lot of people that have done awful things and are treated like monsters You go in there and kind of show them like hey, we're here for you Like mm. we came to like be a light in this dark place and you kind of just see The effect it has on such hardened people how they kind of open up and they're so Accepting to have it and listen and they're having fun and like you just leave really really refreshed and mm. you realize like music really does have like a lot of effect on people yeah, that's so cool. And is that what music, playing music, making it your life and your career, is that what it's about for you? Is it about bringing that line to those dark places or just the, the fans and the fame? Like, 
No, I totally like that. That shifted my focus completely doing those shows because, yeah. like I said, you see the effect that it can have on people. And I did that for a while and got my own like head on straight. Yeah. And by that time, I was like, okay, I want to make this a career, and I want to like the understanding that I'm giving to these guys. I want to give that to everybody, and sure. so um, that is like the main reason I make music is because wow. I want people to feel understood, and I want to understand myself more. Right. It helps me do that too. Yeah. And I know this new album. Um, it, there's a lot of those kind of themes. Like I was listening to it all this morning. It's it's incredible. Everybody check it out. Coming out May first. April fifth. April fifth. April fifth. Even sooner. Yeah. Even sooner. Um, and so what was the writing process for that? Like what kind of thing were you trying to say or express? So the reason it's called Bank on the Funeral is it has like different meanings. Like Bank on the Funeral, I was, there was a period in my life where I was like really depressed and suicidal. And mm. so that was like, can't wait to check out. Like that's banking on the funeral. Right. Um, and then also my uncle was killed when I was four years old. Yeah. And his life, the way he lived his life, and then obviously his death had a huge impact on how I lived my life and a huge impact on my family, so I'm kind of banking on that funeral, you mm. know what I mean? Um, and then now I'm at a point in life where I'm happier than I've ever been and I have people around me that love me and that I love, and I'm just, like, there's more of a fear of death than mm. anything else and a fear of them dying, and so I'm like, okay, I need to do as much as I can do before I do take my last breath, you know? Sure. So bunch of different meanings but that's kind of like I wrote that song and then a lot of these songs are from different periods in my life that kind mm. of collectively make a story from like 19 years old and now which I'm 26 now yeah. and when does the new tour start April 17th April 17th yeah I guess it doesn't really matter saying it because it's sold out that's it's incredible like, though like how does that feel it's sick we didn't expect that at all yeah yeah it sold out in like two weeks. Um, it's funny that the last show to sell out was Richmond. Really? Oh, like where you're yeah. um, <laughs> No hometown love. So, so like, I always get tweets from people in like Norfolk and Virginia Beach like, why don't you play a show here? Yeah. And I'm like, because you don't buy tickets. <laughs> that um, is a thing for sure. Like, what's the most recent single that's come out? Go Easy is the most Go recent Go Easy, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't want to talk about that because what I like better is Beggar's song. I've been listening to that for like, it's so, what is that about? Like, I just moved to LA and I was just like doing a bunch of drugs and mm. partying a bunch and not, not, not doing good things. And I went to South by and I was exhausted and I was just getting kind of tired of it and everybody was partying and I was like, you know, I'm just going to go back to my hotel room and like yeah. write. And so it was kind of just like a like a psalm and a, like a cry for help at the mm. same time. At that South By, when I wrote that song, I had met this guy, Weston Rizzoli, who came to just shoot a couple of the shows. Mm -hmm. um, and he was a super cool guy, but I wrote that piece of that song, met him, and then we went our separate ways. And then like a year and a half later, I went up to upstate New York to finish that song with this mm. guy, Simon Felice, um, who helped me write the bridge of it. And then... We loved it and went back to LA, recorded it, and then once we wanted to do a music video for it, I really wanted to do everything with film, mm. and I was like, I thought of him, yeah. and so he directed the video, so he was there when I wrote it, and then That's he also cool. directed the video. Yeah, no, it's such an, it's an incredible song, I mean, like, Thank such you. an anthem, like, what about the, I was thinking about the cover art, is there, what, do you have anything to do with that? Like, there's such a mm. cohesive theme to all your cover art, I feel like. Yeah, like, my buddy Roswell does all of it, who actually makes music too, and he's that's very cool. literally one of the most creative people I've ever met. For Bank on the Funeral and the singles, we basically just bought a Polaroid mm. and took a bunch of different photos, and he took them to a shop and got them, like, developed and everything, or not developed, but uh, scanned, mm. and then just took them and did, like, different art on them. Um, but the actual album artwork is basically me, like, slowly dying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So. That seems to also be a theme, right? Very like, Who killed Matt Mason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, all really good, uplifting yeah. themes. Yeah. I see it says die on your arm as well. Yeah, just die. Is that what it says? Uh, no, it says <laughs> born a sinner, die a martyr, which is uh, uh, for, I was mentioning my uncle earlier. Like, mm. That's kind of a metaphor for how he yeah. lived his life. Yeah. That's such a beautiful song, the bank on a funeral. That's And that's about him. You yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, kind of, kind of. It's about a couple different things. But... Yeah, but you know, you can't reveal all your... I can't, yeah. There's got to be a sense of mystery. <laughs> 
All right, well, we'll leave it on that mysterious note. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, thank I you I wish for we had chicken me. tenders for you. It's fine. I don't need any more. I mean, if you ever come I again. I ate them all. <laughs> They're gone. They're out of New York <laughs> yeah. State entirely.